This conference will now be recorded. Right. In the last session of Python, we started with the control flow statements and we completed if, if else nested elif is there now. Control flow statements are three types. One is conditional statements. Next one is iterative statements. Iterative statements. Next transfer statements. Transfer statements. Conditional statements are these. If, if else, nested if, elif. These are the conditional statements. Iterative statements are only for loop and then while loop. While loop. Transfer statements are break and continue. Pass. These are the transfer statements. First, uh, we have discussed already if if else nested. Now let me talk about elif here. As I said, that elif is the short form of else space if okay elif is the short form of else space if but in python programming else space if will not be possible okay so that's what we have to short form we have to use elif is a keyword we have to use elif this is nothing but else space if only it is also called as nested if logic instead of uh, writing nested if like this now you can see here it is nested if only, you know, if, else, if, else, like this. Same code we can also write in different way by using elif. I will tell you that. But before that, I want to use where in which case exactly we use elif keyword. Let me show you. So let us consider this is input number. I equals to int of input of enter a number. If I, if I, I equals to equals to one for example i is matching with number one i have to print here coin e1 simply i have to print what's up coin e1 if i equals to equals to one then what we have to use print one only how to print simple let me uh, wait some time because pycharm editor is not fully responding to us okay even when we try to type over there the letters are not appearing over there. Let me. Now it is a print true. I have to say that. Print true not. Print O N E one. One. This is one if condition. If a next if condition I equals to equals to two. I'm taking. Print two. I'm taking. T W O. If I equals to equals to three. I'm taking. Print T H R double If I equals to equals to four, I'm taking. Print F O U R. Okay. These are multiple conditions, but don't think so. These are nested. It's not a nested. Undoubtedly, it's not nested. It is just multiple ifs only. It is not nested. If 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 all ifs are there, if is used to test a specific condition, I said else block i'm taking only one else block if user not entered one or two or three or four i can say this is invalid number invalid input or invalid number okay invalid number or in, invalid input so what will happen in this program if your input is matches with one this will execute if your input is matches with two this will execute if your input is matches with three, this. If your input is matches with three, four. Your input is not matches with this all conditions, then control simply immediately will jump into a invalid number. Okay, but there is a problem in this example. So what is the problem in this in this example? I'll tell you. Once I begin execution, if I entered input values in the output window, like terminal window nine. So what will happen if I enter nine? I value nine. Nine equal to equal to one. Not correct. Nine equal to equal to not correct. Not correct. 
not come. Obviously, it will go to invalid number. This is fine. So perfect, no issues at all. But even then, you can see if I entered my input is four. Okay, uh, my input is what? Four. Four equals to equals one, not correct. Four equal to equal to, not correct. Four equal to equal three, not correct. Yes, it is correct. Correct means it will jump into four. So if if this condition is true, then else block will not execute. No, so that's what here control is not moving to else block. Four is there. But the main problem in this example is what you know. When we enter my input is one, then hit the enter button. Now you can see the problem is what ONE one is printing. Yes, your I value one, it matches with one. Only one is printing, but again you can notice this invalid number also coming. Why this is happening? Okay, this is the problem. Previously, whenever we entered four, only four is coming, but invalid number is not showing. Why the reason? Because this fourth value, fourth condition is the last if condition that is immediately preceded of else. So if this condition is true. If block will execute, else block simply will ignore. But here I am including one, i equals to equals to one. So if this condition is true, this will print. But it doesn't mean that it should not check these conditions. Compulsory, these conditions also will check. Because it is multiple ifs. Number of ifs are there. Number of times you are checking the condition. So i equals to equals to, again it will check. If i equals to equals to one is true means, obviously it is false, no? One equal to equal to false, one equal to equal to three false, one equal to equal to four false. If this is false, obviously it will go to else block. That is going to happen here. So even second number also, if you entered, you will get what actually? Invalid uh, uh, two and invalid number we are getting. Then third number also I'm giving. Suppose here, enter a number three, invalid number it is coming. Got my point? Enter a number. That is three invalid number, it is coming. So, why this is? The reason is even though when we check the condition here, one of the condition is true, but still other condition also test. That's what every time it is going to be else bark only. Let me keep the breakpoint and run debug. Run debug. So, once debug, when we click on debug, debugger window will start here. Okay, debugger window start here in the bottom corner. In this debugger window, we have to enter the number. What what we have to enter the number? So first function key plus uh, uh, what we can say? Oh, debugger window not at all. So this debug test. So you have to enter a number here. So I'm entering my number is one. Then press enter. Debugger window started. I value is holding one. One equal to equal to one, it is correct. Yes, if it is correct, function key plus F8 I'm hitting, it will go to inter, in, inside the if block, print one in the one. After that, if this condition is true also, again, it will check one more condition like I value one, one equals to equals to two. Obviously, it is what actually false. Now you can see one equal to equal to false. Again, press enter, one equal to equal to three, false. Press enter uh, function key plus F8. One equal to equal for false because of this false control is moving to else block. So that's the reason we are getting any one invalid number. Okay, this is the problem in this example. How to overcome this problem in the sense? My requirement is if only one of the condition is true, then remaining condition need not to be test actually. So in that case, we use what actually elif. Elif. Where we have to use elif statement? Here it is. E L I F elif. Elif is a keyword. Elif stands for else space if only cell. Okay. Elif. And now this program you can see if any one of the condition is true, other conditions will not be test. So obviously you will get result for any one only. If one is true, only one will print. It will not go to here and here and here. When it will go to in this locations, when this condition is false, then only it will move to next condition. For example, my condition is my input is two. So it will check two equal to equal to one. Not correct. 
it will go to here to equal to equal to correct correct means it will print it will not execute now so that's what we are getting pwo only it is coming let's keep the breakpoint again here also once i run debug it will ask you enter number now you can see my input is i'm giving what actually three i'm giving so number is three now this time i value holding three value three is equal to equal to one not correct so function key plus f8 now it will go to next condition three equals to equals to two three equals to equals to two here false function key plus f8 three equals to equals to three correct correct means it will jump into inside the elif print three and next elif i equal to equal four it will not check because condition is true it will jump into out of the uh, if conditions and number is three only it is coming number is three is coming or not yes so this is the case exactly here so elif can be used to test multiple condition this is also nested if and same program we can able to convert into nested if pattern also yes this is also nested if now we can see else space if is not possible no else space if is not possible else press enter in next line if is possible one two three four indentations again here inside this if i am taking what else press enter if so now one two three four one two three four here again here i am taking else colon if i am taking one two three four one two three four here one two three four if condition four indentation level now finally here i am taking else block here in this else i am giving what invalid input one two three four like this same same program i converted into else if else if else if it look like nested if or not yes nested if only instead of this complex syntax so i have covered basic syntax like first program how i covered so enter number here two is the two enter num any wrong number entered invalid number it is working fine same program i just converted into nested if only either you can use this pattern but make sure that indentation levels you have to match indentation levels means what <laughs> every time whenever you are going to change the block of code so you can see if block it is else block else block code inside else block we have to write if again inside if block you have to write else inside else block we have to write if again these lines are clearly saying that this is indentation level same matching is required if you take any unmatching like for example one space i'm giving wrong you can see this is unmatching just observe here unmatching indentation error is there once i run this indentation error you will get indentation error unindent does not match any outer indentation level so what is the problem here there is a problem you can select this so that you can recognize this line and this line is not matching no yes you have to make match how to make match this one that's all now this line is matching here indentation levels it will work now so writing python program is easy logically but indentation level matching is somewhat different so you have to take care indentation level. this program is same as previously what i took let's go back by hitting control z control z i'm doing so now it will go back to previous pattern elif through instead of use nested if elif we can use better this is very simple program it look like there is no indentation level only one indentation level is positive this program is same as previously what i have shown that program both are same so this is elif elif in the sense else space if this is also called as nested if so these are all conditional statements in python programming so based on condition only we have to work on it based on condition we have to work on it okay so now coming to the iterative statements like loops concept for loop and while loop what is iteration iteration means one by one suppose generally when do we use iteration things so whenever we uh, have lot of values or group of values or collection 
that values if you want to print one by one then we can go for iterative statements suppose i'll explain the example here suppose you have a list sir you know about list data structure i discuss basic things of list data structure this is having elements what elements 10 20 30, 10 20 30 40 50 if i try to print l how it will print in the output same list format only it will print the output just observe it. same in list format only it will print out 10 20 30 40 50 what my point how it will print the output 10 20 30 40 50 but i don't want this i want only one by one values from this collection i want to take the values out of this list and i want to print them how i can print them there is one option is there so there is indexing concept is there indexing i'll talk about indexing in coming session zero one two three four each and every value is located at indexes so first 10 value is located at zero 20 value is located at one 30 value is located at two 40 value is located at three 40, 50 value located at four only got my point so 10 is one 10 is zero 20 is 1, 30 is 2, 40 is 3, 50 is 4, like this. So, this is the uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, like this. If we want to print one by one values, what I can do? Index concept I am using L of 0, print L of 1, just print L of 1, L of 1, print L of 2, print L of 3. Okay, how long it is? So if you want to display all values, all the indexes you have to provide or not? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like this. Now just observe here, I'm providing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all these values. 10, 20, 30, 40 values are coming. So here, hardly five values are there, five times indexing I'm using. Imagine that there are 100 values are there. Will you, will you say 100 times print L, print L indexes? Yes, if you say it will work. But that's not good practice in reality. The code will not accept in real time because that is time taking process and lengthy process also so to avoid that <coughs> if you want to iterate one by one values from this collection yes it is a collection list is a ordered collection of elements i said its list is a ordered collection of elements i said in this collection i want to iterate one by one values then we can go for for loop or while loop also let me go for for loop here so for loop syntax is this one for loop variable <coughs> loop variable name this is any name we can take loop variable in is a keyword sequences given sequence now here for loop block is statements here this is loop body statements we can use valid any valid statements in the loop body for variable name in sequence statements only for variable name in sequence statements okay so this syntax i'm going to apply sir for loop syntax this is suppose instead of this one what i'm trying to do i want to print one by one values here how to print for loop three for variable name this is loop variable name you can take any loop variable name for example i am taking i is my loop variable name in where sequence what is your sequence name l L is my sequence name. L I am printing. And after that, here in this statement, what we have to print? So as soon as when we hit this, it will ask you to print your valid, like print I. So for I in L, print I. So that means this I value always store at a time one value from this collection. So for 10 in L, means 10 will be stored here. Next 20 in L, 20 will be stored in here. So let's print one by one will be printed. So in this example, what will happen if you take any number of values, like any type of values, any number of values also, like 45, minus 56, 34.5, character, integer, duplicate also. Lot of values I can increase. But how long you can increase that values are going to print completely one by one like this. This is one loop through it is possible. This is for loop example. Let's keep the breakpoint run this run debug test how one by one iteration you can see already l is holding collection of values okay here you can see collection of values are there l is holding 
So in this L, when we place mouse pointer also, this collection is clearly available here. When we expand plus symbol, then it will say index value is also clearly. So the index is clearly available. Now you can see zero index, one index, two index, three index, all total length is 11 items are there here. Okay, you can notice that. So from this 11 items list collection, one by one value, we are iterating and stored into I variable, loop variable. Function key plus F8, I'm hitting I value 10. 10 is printing. 10 is printing here. Again, function key plus F8, I value next one 20. I value 30. I value 40. I'm hitting function key plus F8, keep on. I value sorry, 45. Minus 56, 34.5, 10. That's all. We got this output window, console window, total values are coming. Got my point? This is for loop iteration. So what is the definition of for loop here? For loop is used to iterate the elements of collection. For loop is, for loop is used to iterate, iterate the elements of collection. Iterate the elements of collection. Iterate the elements of collection. What the order? What the order? They appear. What the order? They appear. What the order? They appear. Sir, actually. For loop is used to iterate the elements of collection. What the order? They appear. What the order? They appear. Same order. It is going to iterate elements of collection. That is for loop. Suppose here, if you want to know each and every value after printing type of value also then you can use type function type of i while reading this values from this list collection if you want to know what type of i it is i type also you will come you will get clear so every value type is going to display 10 is integer type 20 is integer type 30 is integer 40 is integer string type i <laughs> 34.5 flow float a is also string 10 is also integer. So why is there a character? No. Yes. But there is no character in Python. Char data type is not available in Python. Only even single character also it is considered as a string only. That's what it is not a character. It is not a character. It is a string only. Sir, can we pass this list directly here instead of L? Yes. Why not? So no need to take separate variable. Directly you can pass this list also here. Here, not only list, here it is a sequence. Sequence means any data structure you can string, list, tuple, set, and so on. Let me give here, I'm giving tuple only, I'm giving. This is tuple collection. From this tuple collection, we are getting one by one values. Okay, integer type. And let me give uh, tuple type is not required. This way. Now I'm, I can give string type also. For example, I'm giving string type. What is my string here? Durga soft, I'm giving. So I'm going to read one by one character from this Durga soft string only. Let's run this Durga soft one by one character. D is one character. U, R, T, A, S, O, F, T like this one. D, U, R, G, A, S, O, F, T like this. Durga soft. Is coming or not? So like this. So any sequence you can able to include it and we will print it now. This is for me. And sometimes we use nested for loop also. Nested for loop means a for loop which is having one more for loop within it is called nested for loop. Yes, we use in our upcoming programming nested loop logics also sometimes. So a for loop, a for loop, a for loop which is having, which is having, so one more for loop within it. One or more for loop within it. One more for loop within it. One more for loop it meant. is called is called is called nested for loop. Nested for loop. But how execution process of nested for loop? I'll tell you. This is one for loop. Inside one more for loop. Here I'm taking. So this is nested. This loop contains one more loop within it. That's what you can see. Indentation spaces are uh, leaving here. This is inner loop, we can call it as, and this is outer loop, we can call it as. Outer loop that is first loop, inner loop this is second loop, only. inner loop and then outer loop. Only. A loop which is having one more loop within it is called in outer loop and inner loop concept clearly here. 
it. Okay. So this is inner loop and this is outer loop. But how it will execute? Yes. Note this point. In the nested for loop, yes, especially for every iteration, for every iteration, for every iteration of outer loop, for every iteration of outer loop, comma, inner loop, inner loop. For every iteration of outer loop, inner loop should finish its all iterations. Should finish its all iterations. All iterations, all iterations. Then only, then only, then only outer loop, outer loop will start with the next iteration. Then only outer loop will start with next iteration. Next iteration. For every iteration of outer loop, for every single iteration of outer loop, inner loop should finish its all iterations only. Once we complete all iterations of inner loop, then only outer loop will start with the next iteration. Okay, after completion of inner loop iterations, then only outer loop starts with the next iteration only. So for every iteration of outer loop, inner loop should finish its all iterations, then only outer loop will start with the next iteration I'm saying. Then only outer loop starts with next iteration. Let me show you example. So for example, I'm taking two lists here. So one is num list. Num list is there. Number list that is. One, two, three numbers I'm taking. Next care list I'm taking. Character list that is. Character list A, B, and then C only. Num list is there. Care list is there. Suppose here I'm printing this numbers collection from the uh, by using for loop only. For n, n is a loop variable. You can take any loop variable. There is no need to take always i only. So i, j, k, l, any name, any loop variable you can take. This loop variable is just after collecting the uh, values from sequence and stored into n variable only. For n in, for n in l, uh, num list, num list, num list print n and for here you can see next for loop i'm take for c in care list c in care list print c print c but do you think these two are nested loop or separate loops these are separate loops exactly so first loop is for only numbers num list will print and second loop is for characters only character list will print so whenever I execute this one, now you can see here, one, two, three, A, B. This loop is completely belongs to this one and this loop is completely belongs to this one. But this is not a nested loop according to my syntax, you can see. A loop within the loop. So here a loop within the another loop not here. You can see I'm just moving this indentation. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. Now this loop is under comes into this loop. So this is outer loop and this is inner loop. As per my statements, for every iteration of outer loop, for every single iteration of outer loop, inner loop should finish its all iterations. Inner loop should finish its what? All iterations only. Yes, all iterations it has to finish. Then only outer loop will start with the next iteration. Okay. So first let me keep the breakpoint. So first, what it will happen? Let me explain through drawing some drawing. Now, first control will jump into where, sir? For n in num list. Num list means this is n value one, and immediately control will jump into inner loop for c in care list. C value what? A only. C value a. Okay, a is there. A is there. Yeah, a. But next iteration, where it will go? Again, it will go to character list only because only one iteration we finish. But two more iterations are there. It has to finish compulsory. So for C in care list means again B is there. One A B. One A B C like this one. One A B C. One A B C. Next, after completion of A B C inner loop iterations, control will jump into next iteration of outer loop. Next iteration outer loop is what? Two. Again, control will jump into inner loop. So here, ABC like this. Three iteration has to complete. 
after completion of inner loop iterations next control will jump into here so outer loop iteration what three again inner loop will starts with the next iteration like abc like three iterations complete so result is one abc two abc three abc like this one okay one abc two abc three abc like this let's uh, keep the breakpoint and run this test debug test now you can see and uh, num list is holding three values care list is holding three values whenever we hit the function key plus f8 here now you can see n value one so n value one one value is there n equal to one function key plus f8 so control will jump into character list now you can see c value what a only here c value a so c equals to a is there c equals to a function key plus f8 n equals to what c equals to b c equals to c now you can see after that n value will become two after two printing again control will jump into inner loop c equals to a c equals to b c equals to c after three iterations again it will go back to outer loop n value three third iteration a c equals to a c equals to b c equals to c finally control will jump into out of the loop in the console window what is the output one first iteration after loop inner loop will finish all iterations a b c two second iteration after loop inner loop is finishing all iterations a b c so next iteration three a b c like this got my point so this is about completely inner loop outer loop concept so nested loop it is for every single iteration of outer loop inner loop it has to finish all iterations then only it will jump into next iteration of outer loop only. so this loops we have to use sometimes when we are working with uh, uh, arrays concept like two dimension arrays rows and columns if you want to read then that time we can use loops concept especially nested loop concept so there is while loop also there yes difference between while loop and for loop is what sir simple as a programmer if you know how many number of iterations are required okay so limited iterations or known iterations in that case we can go for for loop <laughs> limited iterations and known iterations in this case we can go for for loop and while loop in unlimited iterations means not known iterations means how many iterations takes place we don't know as a programmer so at that time we can go for while loop so while loop will is used to execute keep on the statements till the condition is false once the condition is false then control will stop the execution so while loop is used to execute keep on the statements till the condition is false once condition is false then it will stop the execution that is the while loop actually here okay so for example you can consider this there is a database there is a database in that database there are so many records are there but only i want to read five records then go for five for loop because you know five five iterations are required for us but this is one scenario next scenario there is a database but we don't know how many records are available but as long as records are available in the database that all records i want to iterate one by one then go for while loop so condition based it will iterate while loop so while loop syntax is also very simple look at here syntax of while loop so while is a keyword and condition you have to pass condition you have to pass and here in the loop body any valid statements you can include so while condition and statement while condition and then statements okay so let's try to uh, show the example here suppose i am giving i value equals to 1 initialization while i less than or equal to 10 just very simple example print i so what is happening here i plus plus i'm taking i plus plus not there is no i plus plus or plus plus i means post increment and pre increment concept is not there in python so similarly what we need to do so if you want to do uh, what uh, increment values so only the thing is so i plus equals to one this is one this is what add and assignment operator this already we discussed in my operator section 
add and assignment or else this expression we can also write i equals to i plus one both are same incrementing the value one purpose we have to use this expression i plus equals to one or i equals to i plus one any one you can use i plus equals to one or i equals to i plus one okay while i less than or equal to 10 print i i plus equals to one or i equal to i plus one anyone you can use any expression you can use no problem i equals to one while i less than or equal to 10 print i i plus equals to one this is incrementing every time so now this time you can see how this uh, loop will execute it's keep on execute till the condition is false so one to ten values are printing but my requirement i want to print the values in the same line only so end equals to some space i'm giving so this attribute also i discuss in my basic sessions so hope you understand this end means it will not jump into next line it will all the output values will print in the same line only one to ten values only so how it is simple let's keep the breakpoint and debug test i value one i value one one less than or equal to 10 correct only if correct function key plus f8 i value print one now you can see one is will be one more i will become one one will be print next i will be increment to one i equal to i plus one or i plus equals to one i value how much it is two two less than or equal to 10 correct three less than or equal to 10 correct four five six seven eight nine ten less than or equal to ten correct eleven less than or equal to ten not correct if it is false control will jump into out of the while loop and we got this output clear so this is very simple while loop and for loop so any number of iteration it's keep on executing the statements till the condition is false once condition is false then control will jump into out of the loop here okay but in this while loop as well as for loop in this context only i am going to show you how to use this break and continue sir these are important transfer statements we can call it as break and continue break is used to stop the iterations okay what is break here break is used to stop the iterations break is used to stop the iterations yes it will stop the iterations Break is used to stop the iteration based on condition. Based on what? Condition. Based on condition. Continue is not like that. Continue is used to skip the iterations. Continue is used to skip the iterations. And continue with next iteration. Continue with, continue with the next iteration. Yes, it will continue with the next iteration only. It will not stop. So these two break is used to stop the iterations based on condition. Continue is used to skip the current iteration, sir. Continue is used to skip the current iteration. Skip the current iteration. Current iteration. Current iteration and continue with the next iterations. It will continue with the next iteration. It will not stop completely. Let me show you practically break and continue with while loop and with for loop both. First, I'll show you with the for loop how to break the statement. So this for loop, you can see I value one. Okay, sorry. Uh, for uh, what we can say for loop loop variable I in I in suppose a range of and I'm taking range of 10 in the sense range function will print 1 to 10 up to 10 including 9 excluding 10 in time this can be print what actually here 10 values 0 to 9 values 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay let me print these values in the same line only so for this I'm taking what here here now you can say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Range of 10 means range value starts from 0 and including 9, excluding 10 only. But this loop can be print 0 to 9 values. But I don't want to print sometimes like you can see if i equals to equals to 4. 
whenever my condition is reaches to four immediately i want to break it sir break break means what look at here break is used to stop the iterations based on condition only yes based on condition it will stop the iterations now let's run this we are stopping the iterations 0 1 2 3 only it will be there whenever i value reaches to four then i should say stop stop in the sense what it will stop the execution and 0 1 2 3 only it will be there though we are able to get the values from 0 to 9 but still i don't want to 0 to 9 only 0 1 2 3 is enough then in this case what we use break in this case what we use break so for i equals to if i equals to equals to 4 if it is matching 4 value i value iteration 4 then i want to stop suppose here i am using continue then what will happen continue is used to skip the current iteration it is used to skip the current iteration and continue with the next iteration i'll say continue is used to skip the current iteration and continue with the next iteration now you can see it run this and one two three four is not going to iterate it will skip then it will continue with the next iteration like five six seven eight like this but if i want to continue more values then we can use r i equals to equals to six also i'm giving that means i equals to equals to four or i equals to equals six both i want to skip so fourth iteration is not there six is not is there seven eight nine continue five is continue so continue is used to only skip the current iteration and continue with the next iteration and break is used to stop the iterations completely okay this this concept we can use not only inside for loop while loop also you can use let me show you break and as well as continue with while loop so i equals to one while while i less than or equal to 10 then print i print i this loop can be print what actually 10 values and attribute i'm using for same line display output value same line so oh so i have not increment of one i equal to i plus one that's what you can see this i one as long as one less than or equal to 10 what i said you can print one only it's keep on printing it is unlimited iterations no yes so let's stop debugging and i want to stop debugging stop run and i want to increment i value i plus equals to one this i forgot whenever we increment then it will go to next value iteration so two three four five six seven eight but here you can see i am trying to break the uh, iterations if i equals to equals to four again matching then i want to stop what break break means what here it will stop the iterations only one two three is coming like this there is no four but here continue if you want to do how i can do that continue you can say continue continue but look at here if i try to continue here so one two three only is there yes four is going to skip it will not continue but when it will be continue okay if you increment this here i plus equals to one then only here continue you can see it will continue now you can see fourth iteration is skipping fifth iteration is continue why sir here it is increment is required again just observe here if i don't increment like this here simple logic i'll keep the breakpoint here okay what is happening you can see this note this point debug test i value one when we hit the function key plus f8 now you can see i value one less than or equal to 10 correct one equal to equal to four not correct if not correct it will jump into print one value will print one increment to by one two less than or equal to 10 correct Two equal to equal to four not correct if not correct it will jump into where it will print two value also yes two will become three three less than or equal to 10 correct three equal to equal to four not correct it will print three increment by one four four less than or equal to 10 correct four equal to equal to four correct correct means what it has to skip the iteration but after skip this fourth iteration it has to continue with fifth iteration no yes how it will continue without incrementing here immediately so that's what it is not going to be continue by incrementing now you can see continue again going back continue again going back continue it is not move forward why it is not move forward because after whenever we reaches i equal to four 
it has to increment then only it will move forward fifth iteration it will continue that's what we are not getting the output result got my point so here we have to increment here i plus equals to one when we increment this it will go with five five value three it will continue fifth fourth value will skip five value three it will continue that's what we got this output one two three four is not there five six if you want to uh, skip more iteration then again we can use i equals to equals to seven also i'm taking seven and fourth will be skip fourth iteration is skipping seven iteration is skipping this is continue with while continue with for break with while break with for loop so break means complete iteration you can able to stop continue means only current iteration we can skip and remaining iteration we can continue there is one more important keyword is there pass keyword is there pass p a s s pass so pass is a keyword which is used to make leave the block of code as empty means inside the while loop or inside the for loop as a programmer if you don't want to include any logic temporarily if you want to skip this uh, block of code then we use pass keyword sir what happen if i don't use pass keyword here if you don't use pass keyword it will give indentation error obviously okay so you should not leave while with the logic while while loop body should not be empty always so it has to have the some condition now pass or something like this now once i run this it will work now same similarly not only while loop suppose for loop i am taking for i in range for i in range i am taking my range values is what actually print i i can say that loop for loop body is there so body is there it will execute if there is no body sometimes i don't know how to write the body of the uh, logic of the for loop so as a programmer temporarily i want to leave this so i can use pass so to to leave the block of code as empty or without implementation then we use pass keyword in python programming if you don't use pass keyword then python interpreter will not allow will not allow you to move further programming compulsory if you don't want to implement anything you can use pass keyword not only here in the if block else block also for example i value 10 i am taking if i equals to equals to 10 if you have with the logic you can write it logic otherwise you can use pass else block again pass so nothing will execute in this case so there is no program error also if i don't remove anything if i don't include pass no code is available in the if block and else block obviously indentation error you will get if you have logic with you then you can write logic with you print true i can say it. print true if this condition is true i can say true if this condition is false i can say false here so why we use pass keyword in the sense to leave the block of code as empty then we can use pass keyword here okay pass keyword so this is the case so this is what actually complete the control flow statements which is available in python programming once you got an idea about this if if else nested if eli for while break continue then tomorrow onwards we'll starts with the string data structure with its all functionalities string data structure with its all functionalities so we we know about string basic idea i have given in the last examples string is a sequence of characters or group of characters string can be created by using single quotes double quotes triple single quotes triple double quotes string is immutable so this is basic idea which i give but actually we have to do lot of functions we have to discuss on string you know how to get the functions list on string so simple dir of str print dir of str in the sense str represents string data structure in python and these are all list of functions which are available on string you have to discuss we have to discuss each and every function in detail with practical implementation this concept is called string manipulation similarly other data structures also we have to discuss list tuple set dictionary range bytes byte array frozen set everything we have to discuss and it will take minimum 4 uh, to 5 days to complete all data structure with all functionalities because it is important so that's all from my end and in the last session i have given some task uh, can you please tell me what task i have given anyone
I think uh, find the biggest of uh, three numbers. Yeah, yeah. Have you done that? If you done, then you can paste your code. Yeah, that's fine, Mr. Aksai. You are right. This code is absolutely right. But this we can write in more simply simplifies. Yes, I'm copying and pasting here. So he is accepting what actually three numbers. If A greater than B, if A greater than C, A is greater than B and C. He if B greater than C and B is greater than A and C. Else is greater than A and C. Yes, it's fine. Yeah, this is fine. I expected this code only. Yes, someone is written. Now you can see A value 10, B value 20, C value 30. Obviously, that is greater than 10 and 20 only. Okay. Which number is biggest number? I said, okay, no problem. This is also fine. 20 and 10. So it is correct. But this is also required. More simplifies code. This is what I expected. So this is my code similarly look like. Okay. This code. Sweta has written like this. Okay. So brackets are not optional. Okay, no problem. So you can see i j k if i greater than or equal to j and j i greater than or equal to k i is biggest value or else j is biggest value. No, this is not required to check. No, j greater than or equal to k is not required. J greater than or equal to i is not required. I think because already this condition is there. This is enough. J is big, else k is big only. It will work. If you enter two, three, four, obviously four is the biggest value. If you enter three, four, two, or uh, four, three, two, any logic, two, then four is the biggest value. This is fine. This I expect. End operator I have to use. Where I have to download pie chart? I mean, why you are asking this time? Already we clearly mentioned in my previous demo lectures. Have you watched the videos? If you watch my second or third video, you will get clear idea how we can download PyCharm and all. I think you are not watching my videos. That's not accept. You must and should watch the video and you have to know that clearly. Okay. So that's what we are recording videos and we are sending, you know. So PyCharm editor, still you are asking means you have not at all started practice. That's not good. Please do it immediately. So you can see PyCharm editor, you can go to simply go to search and download PyCharm. Download PyCharm. And here there is official website is there, jetbrains.com. Click on this link. Once you click on this link, now you can see here, download community version, you have to download. These steps already I have given clearly in my video. If you follow that video step by step, you will easily download and install. That is not a big deal. Please do it. Okay. Yeah. Pratik Kulakarni, yes, your code also absolutely fine. This is A greater than A greater than B and uh, A greater than C. A is the greatest and B greater than A and B greater than C. B is the greatest. C is the greatest. It's fine. And today task what I'm giving you. Take one input value. Okay. Your input should be like this input equals to any number like three. Output should be how it should be now. Output is look like output is that three table you have to generate three equal to three into one equal to three, three into two equal to six, like this one, three into ten equal to thirty, up to ten, ten multiplication. Got my point? Take any input value from the user, user choice, that is 3 or 4 or 5, he will enter. Once he will enter 3 or 4 or 5, then that number table we have to generate, like same picture, 3 into 1, 3 into 2, 3 into 3, 3 into 4, 3 into 5, up to 3 into 10. This logic you can write it. Okay? Yes. So this is the case actually here. This is the case. So let's uh, go for... Tomorrow session will continue from here onwards. Then, uh, Mr. Vishnu and Arasu, uh, I request you please uh, confirm to Durga Saf, okay? So they are trying to contact you. Please uh, respond with them so that we will get clarity. So we'll see tomorrow.